our seats. Thank you very much. You can turn to your neighbor and tell them you are loved. And to the next one and behind and in front and tell them you are loved. Amen. Bona Sifiri. You are loved. I know love is a basic human need to be loved. And uh, even children respond to love. Human beings respond to love. And I want to believe that's the reason Jesus came and died on the cross for each and every one of us so that we can be assured of God's love. I'd like us to read from Genesis chapter 29 from verse 31 to 35. Genesis 29 verse 31 to 35. This is what the Bible say, says. Uh, when the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb. But Rachel was barren. So Leah conceived and bore a son. So she called his name Reuben. For she said, the Lord has surely looked on my affliction. Now therefore, my husband will love me. Then she conceived again and bore a son and said, because the Lord has heard that I'm unloved, he has therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. She conceived again and bore a son and said, Now this time my husband will become attached to me, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore his name was called Levi. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, Now I will praise the Lord. Therefore, she called his name Judah. Then she stopped bearing. This was a woman. Leah was a woman like all the ladies that are seated here today. And the Bible talks, the story just before the text we've read today, it talks of a man by the name Jacob who happened to be the husband to Leah. So Jacob is on the run he is running from his brother Esau. And he ran into his uncle's home. And while he is there, he is serving the uncle. He saw a beautiful girl whose name was Rachel. And like uh, I normally hear people say, love at first sight. So I want to believe that's what happened. He saw Rachel and fell in love with Rachel. And so he talked to Laban, his uncle. And his uncle said, for you to get this girl, Rachel, you'll have to work for me for seven years. So that was like what we currently call the bride price. He was to work for seven years to be given Rachel. And because he loved Rachel so much, he worked for those seven years. And then on the day that they were supposed to be wedding with Rachel, Laban who was a trickster, more of a trickster than Jacob himself, decided to give Leah. Because in their tradition, a younger girl could not be married before the older one. And so Laban says, let me give this man Leah, because Leah has not yet been betrothed. And when he went in with her, he discovered this was not the girl that he had loved. He discovered this was the sister. And many times as I read that scripture, it makes me imagine the wedding must have happened past six o'clock. It must have been dark. No wonder, how could you and Inani amepewa? He didn't know who he has been given. And so he discovers the person he has, not, he has been given is not the one that he loved. And he comes back to his father-in-law who was also his uncle. And I believe he was complaining and asking, why did you do this to me? And the uncle tries to explain the tradition. And so they come to an agreement. The uncle says, if you want Leah, I will give you, I'll give you Leah one week after this wedding. I'll give her to you. But after I've given her to you, 
you will work for me for the next seven years. Bonus if you will. Last Sunday in the afternoon, we had our brother John talking to us about culture and Christianity. And there's something he said, and I started asking myself, am I still on loan? <laughs> Bonus if you will. Yes. Because some women are given out but on loan. So the husband keeps going back to their place so that he can continue paying the loan from time to time. <laughs> and this was the same thing with Rachel. So Rachel has been given to Jacob, but on loan. And so Jacob has to continue. Yes, they are together, but he has to continue working for seven other years so that this loan can be completely paid. That was the Jewish tradition. And so, Jacob at the end of the day, the first time when he was given Leah, he was given Leah plus the maid. So Leah came with another woman. So for one week, he had two women in his house. And then after one week, he's been given Rachel, but Rachel also does not come alone. Rachel also comes with a maid. So ultimately, at the end of the day, this man has four women in that house. And those of us who have seen what polygamy looks like, you can imagine the kind of stress this man was going through having four women around him. But his love was just for Rachel. And so he despised Leah. Leah found herself in a situation that was beyond her control. And I want to imagine from time to time, Jacob kept showing her, despising her, rejecting her, but there was nothing she could do because traditionally she had been given over to this man. So I want to believe every morning she woke up and every morning she could give a smile. The neighbors would look at her and think, every, think everything was okay. And every morning she would try to please this man as much as possible because women are normally told you're supposed to submit, you're supposed to love, you're supposed to respect. I want to believe that Leah did all these things trying to get the love of the husband but to no avail. She was despised. Just like some of us seated here today. We wake up every morning but there's something that has always stuck in your heart. You know that you are despised. It could be in your workplace. It could be in your marriage. It could be in your family. You are just despised. So you wake up every morning. You dress the best you know how. You smile the best you know how. But deep inside of you, you're bleeding. That's what was happening with Leah. She was bleeding deep inside of her. She kept wondering, what am I going to do with this man so that this man can love me too the way he loves my sister? And some of us have tried doing many things. If it's in your workplace, you overwork, you become a workaholic so that at least your boss can at least accept you. So that your boss can be able to notice your, that you are the best worker. But somehow, he never seems to notice. He thinks that that is your responsibility anyway. Some of us women are seated here and you're trying the best you know how. You have been trying to make this man just see how much you respect him. You wake up every morning, you're doing breakfast for him, you're ironing his clothes, you're ensuring he's looking the best when he's leaving the house. But this man one day comes home and tells you, I'm no longer in love with you. I have found another rejection. It could be you have been rejected by your parents. Why? Because among all your siblings, it is you who came home with a D. The rest were A students. And so they look at you and they are wondering, who did you take after? <laughs> yeah, because for them, they were high flyers. So they are wondering, he mbegu imetoka wapi? And maybe the mother keeps thinking, he, this one, I think it is coming from where I am married. And the father also looks around and says, So your issue also has been bringing cases between your parents and you have been rejected. Just like Leah was rejected. 
And you know, the interesting thing that gives me joy is that though Leah was rejected, the Lord so won us, if you will. The Bible says that when the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, so the Lord sees. If God was able to see the case of Leah, that means the Lord sees your case. One as if you If he was able to do something about Leah, it means he is ready today to do something because of your case. Jehovah sees. There is nothing that happens behind his back. Nothing. He sees. And so the Lord saw that Leah was unloved. And what did he decide to do? He decided to open the womb of Leah. And the Bible says, but Rachel was barren. The very Rachel who was loved was barren. And today we are seated here looking very beautiful from here. When you're standing here, you see very beautiful faces. But I know there are some of us that behind those smiley faces, behind that beautiful dress that you're wearing or that beautiful suit that you're having, there is a pain in your heart. There is a pain you have been working with. Nobody seems to know it because we have been good or rather we have become professionals at wearing a mask so that life can go on. I have come to tell you today that God can see beyond that mask. He can see beyond that mask. And so the Bible says in that scripture that we've read, if it can be projected to, for us again, the Bible says that God saw that Leah was unloved. He opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Verse 32. <coughs> so Leah conceived and bore a son. And you know, all this while, God has come through for Leah. But Leah is still trying to see how to please the husband. And she is saying, this time I have gotten a son. Now my affliction, the Lord has looked upon my affliction. Now therefore, my husband will love me. But the husband doesn't love her. In fact, when you look at many translations, that portion of scripture is called the sons of Jacob. Leah is not referred to anywhere. As if the sons could have come minus Leah. But as if you, the sons of Jacob. So the rejection goes on and on. And she gets the firstborn. And she's thinking, the husband, now my husband will love me. She gets the secondborn. You're thinking, now my husband will love me. The thirdborn, the same. Ultimately, she discovered, even if I got ten of them, this man will not love me. And so what does she decide to do? She decides to turn back and look unto the one who has seen her affliction and decides to praise him. Bonus if you will. A time comes in our life when we now decide to work as unto God, not as unto men. And decide to praise him because he has seen our affliction. Many times we are rejected because of our gender. Maybe your parents had four girls, one, two, three, four. And when they were expecting the fifth one, they thought this one will be a son. And then you appeared, a daughter. Dad did not even come to bring napkins. Zile enzizetu. Akukuwa na pampas. He didn't even come to visit in the hospital because it was another daughter. You know? Or sometimes... You can get to a place where you're despised because of your color. Your skin color. Something that is beyond your control. You get despised. Once upon a time, my son was in class four. And there's a teacher who told him, Wewe ni mweusi kama maka. And that thing destroyed his self-esteem. You know, a rejection just because of a complexion Something that you do not have control about. And you end up being mistreated. As I stand here today, all I've come to say is, Jehovah sees and he knows. And because he knows, he is going to rise up on your case. And he will do something on your behalf.
For some of us, because we've been thinking, nobody cares. I've gone through this thing for a very long time. You find yourself locked up in alcohol. You find yourself locked up in rebellion. You find yourself locked up in drug addiction. Why? Because you are seeking attention. You are looking for attention. I want to tell you, all these things that we are running as a way of escape to are not the solution. They cannot assist us in our place of despise, being despised. They cannot assist us in our place of rejection. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can do that. Hallelujah. I want us to look at another example of a man. This was a woman. And maybe you're sitting there and thinking, that is for women. I want us to look at a man. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 6 to 13. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 6 to 13. This is what the Bible says. So it was when they came that he looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointing is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I've refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Thus Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are all the young men here? Then he said, there remain, remains yet the youngest. And there he is, keeping the sheep. And someone said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ready with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is the one. This is the story of King David. Up till now, Saul has been the king. But he has done something that has been displeasing to God. And so the Lord has rejected him as king. And God is on a mission of looking for the next king, of anointing the next king. And so he sent Samuel and tells Samuel, go to the house of Jesse and anoint for me a king. And he gets into the house of Jesse offers a sacrifice and invites Jesse and his sons. And Jesse decides to come with the seven sons and leaves out the eighth one. Whereas he knew that they were supposed to be going for a sacrifice. I want to believe that every parent here, any father here, when you know there is something that is beneficial for your family, you will come with your entire household. You won't leave one behind. But Jesse decides that David should continue taking care of the sheep out there. But calls his seven sons. Why did he do that? It was because of the things that were surrounding the birth of King David. By the time King David was being born, Jesse and the wife were not in good terms. That's what history says. They were not in good terms. And so they had been apart for several years. Yes. Then one time, he decided he wanted to get a young girl. And what the wife did, because the wife had wind of it, the wife decided to dress up like a young girl. And you know, in the Jewish community, there's a way of dressing they have that almost looks like the Muslim community. So she dressed with their long dresses and those things that covers their heads. I don't know whether you've ever seen the Muslim girls. And at times they dress, cover everything, and all you can see are the eyes. So you know, you don't know what face is behind the, the eyes. You cannot identify what is behind those eyes. And so this woman decides to dress like that and goes in with the husband. And the husband is thinking, this is another young girl that has been brought to me. And he's excited. In the process, the wife conceives. 
and then goes away. And Jesse is thinking, all that has happened is with some strange girl somewhere. And so after conception, David is born. And I want to believe before David is born, Jesse and his other sons are busy looking at this lady. The sons are looking at their mother and the father is looking at their wife and wondering, where did this happen? Who did you go out with? You are unfaithful. And you know, the rejection continues and continues. Ultimately, David is born. And because David has been born under those circumstances, the brothers reject him. The father reject him. Not knowing that he is actually flesh and blood. They are flesh and blood. And so what does the father do? He is mistreated. He is taken into the wilderness. He's the one taking care of the sheep. He's the one taking care of the goats. Where the lions at times attack, the bears attack. Because the father doesn't care even if a bear will maul him. But you know what? A time comes. And because Jehovah sees. Hallelujah. Because Jehovah sees. God has already an appointment. God is on a mission. He knows that in the house of Jesse, he has set apart a young man for himself, whom he has already appointed to be king. And so he is sending Samuel to the house of Jesse. And because Jesse already despised David, because Jesse doesn't think anything good can come out of David, just like some person somewhere has been thinking that nothing good can come out of you. Bwana Sifiwe. They decide that they are going to bring the other sons. So the other sons come into the sacrifice while David is in the wilderness. And the first one, Eliab, passes. And all the rest pass one after another. And you know what the Lord says? Don't anoint. They are not the ones. When the hand of the Lord is upon you, it does not matter who goes ahead of you. One has a view. They can all be paraded. But you know what the Lord will say? It is not that one. It's until the time when you will appear. And so when all the seven have passed, Samuel is asking Jesse, are these all your sons? Because Samuel is wondering, God told me to come and anoint a man here. But all these sons have passed, I have found none. Is this all? Are these all your sons? And sheepishly, I can see him looking at the ground. <laughs> I can see him fidgeting. And he is saying, there is one young one. He is with the sheep. And Samuel stands. And the rest are standing. And Samuel says, go for him. Send for him. And we are not sitting down to eat this sacrifice until he has appeared here. Bona sifiwi. Immediately there is a standing ovation. Hallelujah. Yes, all the other brothers who had despised him are now standing waiting for him. Even the father is now standing waiting for him. The prophet is standing waiting for him because the hand of Jehovah is upon his life. Bona asifiwe. The hand of the king of kings is upon his life. We are not told how long they stood, but because the sacrifice had already been slaughtered. I want to believe Kamani Kurost, the Nyamachoma was ready that they needed to eat. I don't know how long they stood in waiting, when they were waiting for David. I doubt whether they could have waited for him to pass through the barber shop because his hair must have been unkept. He had been in the wilderness, remember? Bona civil. I don't know whether they could have waited for him to pass through the bathroom. He must have just come the way he was from the wilderness. I don't know who he left with the sheep. He could have come with them as Yache Mahali, at least in safety. Then he appears in his unkept manner, smelling of the, 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 the sheep and the goats. But when he appears, the Lord says, this is the one. Asifiwe. This is the one. The Bible says his eyes were bright and he was good looking. What was good looking about a shepherd? I don't know. 
But when the hand of the Lord is upon you, your eyes will be bright and you will be good looking. It does not matter the cave from which you are going to be healed. It does not matter the frustration that you have gone through. It doesn't matter how you will appear in the presence of God. All that will matter is that the, the hand of Jehovah is upon your life. And that is all we need in this generation. Hallelujah. And so do not worry. Jehovah sees. Hallelujah. Jehovah sees. You have been battered in that marriage. Jehovah sees. You have been mistreated in that workplace. Jehovah sees. You've been struggling trying to make ends meet. Jehovah sees. He looks at you. He sees it. And he not only sees, he is saying, I have come that I may get you out of that mess. He has loved us with an everlasting love. And God has a habit of always looking out for people who are rejected. He has that habit of looking out for people who are rejected. When Moses was on the run, he is in the wilderness. He is taking care of sheep. Jehovah appears in a burning bush. Hallelujah. He could not have gone back to Egypt because of what he had done. He was in hiding. But Jehovah could see. And Jehovah still had a mission for him. Jehovah sees. I don't know what it is that you have been going through. I don't know where it is that you have been hiding. I don't know where it is that as a result of the rejection, they have kept you. I don't know where that is. Could it be that in your place of work, you've worked in one position, come rain, come shine, you're working so hard, but there's no promotion coming for you. Jehovah sees. Bona sefiwe. He sees. And today, he is willing to come through for you. He is willing to come through for you. Just like David, who was in the fields, you could be in the worst of places. There is no place the hand of God cannot get you. One has a few. You could still be seated here, struggling with drinking, struggling with drugs. Your parents have given up on you. You know? They have talked until they have said, Huyo, tumemuachia mungu. It is great because they left you in the hands of God. And tonight, this afternoon, or this morning, because Jehovah sees, he is willing to save you out of those situations. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ came and died for us on the cross of Calvary. He did not wait for us to be clean. He came while we were yet sinners. And let me tell you, you could be here, you're not born again. Today is the day. And do not care about the people who are seated around you. They too have a story. It's only that they have never told it to you. They have a story. There was a time that they were on the way to destruction, but Jehovah came. That is the reason they can praise today. And you have been, yes, on your way to destruction, but Jehovah is here this morning. He is willing to save you. He is willing to set you free. He is willing to cleanse you, and he is willing to embrace you and call you my daughter, my son. You know, the Bible says that there was a time we were not a people. You know, many times we walk and we walk like we were always a people since the time we were born. No, we were not a people until the time when Christ found us and gave us his name. Then we became a people. He adopted us into his family. And you know, when you realize that he has adopted you into his family, then you will live a life that is of humility because without him, you would not be where you are. And so Jehovah is here. 
Christ Jesus is here. And why is he here? He is here because he is on a mission. He is on a mission to remove somebody from the Mary clay. He is on a mission to remove someone today from the slimy pit. He is on a mission today to open somebody's womb. He is on a mission today to crown somebody here. Somebody who has been going through a rejection. Someone who has been despised. Someone who has been thinking that he is worth nothing. He is on a mission today to deal with such a people and to change their destinies. He wants to change your destiny. He changed the destiny of Leah. He changed the destiny of King David. He will change the destiny of Mary this morning. He will change the destiny of John this morning. He will change the destiny of your name. You can put your name right there. Remember, Jesus took upon himself rejection that you may be accepted. There is no way you can walk around carrying rejection anymore. You are loved. I started by saying you are loved. Maybe you're a young lady here. And there's this guy you courted just when you were about to get married. You even went for the first visit. Then when you came back, you discovered they're marrying somebody else. And you've been looking at yourself and thinking, there must be something wrong with me. No, there is nothing wrong with you. It's only that that man was not worth you. Buona asifiwe. They were not worth you. No wonder they had to go to somebody else. God is preparing somebody who is worth you. And that person will come to you at the right time. Maybe a young man. And you've been trying to approach sisters, but all of them are saying no. Until your self-esteem has come down. Because all these sisters are like rejecting you. Let me tell you, the timing of the Lord is yet to come. And when it comes, he will give you a beautiful woman. You know the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 24 that Rachel was beautiful. Was good looking. And so never ever sit back and think you're good for nothing. You could be sitting here, you did exams a few years ago and all you could get was maybe an E. Or it was a D. And the system, the world system has been cheating you that because of those grades, you are damned to destruction. Let me tell you something. God can put grades aside and bless you. He can put them aside and bless you and make you an employer. Njenga Karume was not a form for liver. I am told. I don't know, but I'm told. But you know what? He was an employer, wasn't he? He was our leader, wasn't he? Didn't he lead those people who have PhDs? He did. And so all we need is to cry out to God so that he can lift us up. Jehovah sees. Hallelujah. Jehovah sees. And today he can see that desperation, that cry. That cry you cried last night even as I finish. You cried last, last night and you were wondering who will help me in this situation. Jehovah is here this morning. Hallelujah. 